Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about Journey by Patricia Grace. My name is Barbara and I'll explain everything related to the meaning of this story as it appears in Stories of Ourselves, the University of Cambridge International Examinations Anthology of Short Stories in English. I'll begin with some context about the author of this story before explaining the plot in a nutshell. I'll explain the characters that you should be aware of in the story and then I'll highlight important themes that you should consider when studying and reading through this text. Bear in mind that we do have a Stories of Ourselves course that goes into depth on these stories, so do make sure you also sign up for the course. So let's get started. Now to begin with, Patricia Grace herself as an author, her origins is Maori. In other words, she's a Maori novelist and she was born in Wellington, New Zealand in 1937 and she has taught in primary and secondary schools and she was the writing fellow at Victoria University in Wellington in 1985. Currently, she's a full-time writer and she lives on the ancestral land of her Maori people of Ngati Toa, Ngati Rauka and Te Ati Awa. And her previous novels include Mutu Wenhua, The Moon Sleeps and Patiki, which won the fiction section of the New Zealand Book Awards, as well as the Literature Paris in Frankfurt. And she's also written four short story collections. Now, let's look at the story itself, Journey. Now, to better understand this story, it's really important to understand the context related to the plot of this story. Now, Journey takes place in New Zealand during the 1980s. Now, during this time, immigration flourished and the country became very ethnically diverse. Yet by 2002, so this is in the period of over 20 years, the native Maori only held about 14% of the country's population, even if they are native to New Zealand. The amount of immigrants during this time was also so high that the government had to place laws and limits on who came into the country, of course being New Zealand. This led many Maori people to leave, so they left their ancestral home and they went to Australia. However, they faced limits on this travel because it, was co it caused economic damage to the Australian government as too many Maori people were on welfare. So of course this question of immigration, this question of losing ancestral home is going to be touched upon in journey the story itself. Now to summarize this story, journey is literally about an elderly Maori man who takes a journey into town as he calls it, but it's also figuratively a description of life's journey and of progress. More specifically, this story questions just how much progress truly is progress. Now, as this elderly Maori man progresses on his journey from taxi to train and to town, he notes and comments on all of the little things that are both the same but also different. In particular, he notes the changes that have been made to the land, such as how the government has laid down an artificial landmass to create more room for railway tracks. Now, once this old Maori man is in town, we learn that he has taken this journey to try to fight similar land changes. Now, the government, presumably the New Zealand government, is taking land owned by the native Maoris and developing it. And we see this when he protests to Paul, we want nothing more than what is ours already. However, the government is taking too long to develop the land, leaving this old man's nieces and nephews essentially dispossessed. They have no homes. And this old man is simply trying to negotiate a better deal in which his nephews and nieces can start building homes immediately in an area different from what the government has already designated will be their residential place. Now, when this old Maori man protests that his nieces and nephews need homes, he's told that they will be given a land of equivalent values. However, the natives don't want to live on this other land of equivalent value. They want to live on their ancestral land that has been, and to quote from the story, hours since before we were born. However, sadly, of course, the man leaves empty handed and is treated like a fool. Hence, the purpose of this story, presumably, is to question what governments deem to be development and progress and to show common ways in which native people are really mistreated and dispossessed. Now, when it comes to the characters of this story, the first, of course, is the old man. So he's a 71 year old native Maori. He's very sarcastic and also we get the sense that he's quite grumpy. He takes a journey both physically and figuratively. Now, the figurative journey 
is a description of life's journey in progress. So the land is progressing, the land that he lives on. It's being modernized even when he's sitting on the train with new technology improving the railways. This is something of a shock to him as he can remember traveling to the city previously by steam train. So this journey, again, it shows both progress and this is a journey. However, it also shows how things can change through life. And this is something perhaps of a shock to the old man. Also, the old man, when he's on a train to the city, he notices how much the landscape has changed. He notices the difference that time has brought. Now, this may be important as in many ways, this foreshadows things. This foreshadows the changes that he will see and that are crystallized. The old man also wants to change the small piece of land that he owns and just essentially build some homes on it for his nephews and nieces. This is his ancestral home. He should have the power to decide what he will do with that land. However, it becomes very clear to us as readers that the old man is in reality very powerless when it comes to decision making on the changes that he wishes to make on his own ancestral land and he will soon be dispossessed. Now, the other character who actually is named is called Paul, and he's a city official that the old man goes to see, the old man travels into town to see, who's dealing with the bureaucratic paperwork relating to his land. Now, it becomes clear that the city planners basically intend to make car parking spaces out of the old man's land, so something that's so valuable to the old man and his whole family is essentially just going to be made into a car park. Now, Paul doesn't really empathise with the old man's plight, and this leads the old man to become really frustrated, and he kicks and damages Paul's death in frustration but of course we can see that he's really powerless that's all he can do the other character is young fuller and he's the taxi driver the old man speaks to while in the taxi another character is george and he's the old man's nephew he speaks about the issues the old man is facing with his land and we can see that him as well as his relatives will be dispossessed as the story ends now, when it comes to themes, the first is that of change. So the old man notices the change in technology, the change in government regulations, in other words, government laws, the change to his family life, as well as the impending land loss that comes and the change in his own body as he grows old and he accepts death. Now, closely linked is the theme of death. So change leads to death and the many deaths that are hinted in this story. So the death of the old man is revealed at the end when he expresses his wish to be burned, to be cremated. However, there's a different type of death. The death of the family's land and the death of their way of life is hinted at with the oncoming dispossession of land. And the sad thing is that this dispossession will just simply make way for more car parking spaces. His land has been taken off him and his family just to make a parking lot. Also, the death of a cultural way of life and the past is hinted at, so the mention of new technology and developments which kill off old traditions and old ways of doing things. The other important theme is that of dispossessions. The old man and his family are likely Maori people and they seem like they will be dispossessed of their ancestral land and their ancestral home and the old man is really frustrated and his nieces and nephews are fearful of the future as a landless people. So that's all. If you found this summary video useful, do make sure you sign up for our Stories of Ourselves course and also check out our website, which is www.firstratetutors.com, where you can find plenty of other English revision worksheets, model answers and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses, including Edexcel, AQA and IGCSE. Thank you so much for watching.